I hung on the windswept tree nine long nights, wounded with a spear dedicated to Odin, myself to myself. On that tree from which no man knows where the roots run, no bread was I given, no drink from my home. I stared down from that tree. I took up the runes. Screaming, I took them. And then I fell back from that place. Nine magic charms that I learned from the famous son of Gorthor, Bessler's father. Then I was given a drink of the precious mead, poured from Odrira. I began to go wise, to quicken, to grow, and to prosper. One word found another word for me. One deed found another deed for me. In the runes you must find a meaningful letter, a very great letter, a very powerful letter that the mighty sage stained and the powerful gods made and the rune masters of the gods carved out. Odin for the Aesir, Dane for the elves, Dvalin for the dwarves and Asvid for the giants. I myself carved some. Do you know how to stain? Do you know how to test that? Do you know how to carve? Do you know how to interpret? Do you know how to ask? Do you know how to sacrifice? Do you know how to dispatch? Do you know how to slaughter? Better not to pray than sacrifice too much. For one gift always calls for another. Better not dispatch, lest you slaughter too much. So Thrun carved out for the history of nations, where he rose up, when he came back. I know the spells that the rulers of all kings do not know, nor any sons of men. And one is called help, and will help you with accusations and sorrows, and all sorts of anxiety. I know a second that the sons of men need, those who wish to be physicians and healers. I know a third which is very useful to me. It will fatten my enemies. It will blunt the edges of their weapons, so their swords and clubs do not fight. I know a fourth if a man chains my limbs. I can charm in such a way that I can walk free. Bonds will slip from my wrists. Betters will slip from my feet. I know a fifth if I see a dart fly amidst the army, it cannot slow, fly so fast that I cannot stop it if I can see it with my eyes. I know a sixth, if a man tries to harm me with the roots of a sapphire tree, all the harm he has conjured upon me will turn and devour him, not me, for I know that spell. I know a seventh, when flames rise up in the halls of my companions, I know the charm to quell the flames. I know an eighth, if hatred erupts between the sons of warriors, I know the words to quickly bring settlement. I know a ninth, if I am to sail my ship on the angry sea, I can sing the waves to sleep, because I know the song to lull the wind. I know a tenth, if I see witches flying up in the air, I can chant in such a way that they cannot make it back to their body, but they cannot make it back to their spirits. I know an eleventh, if I have to send loyal companions to battle, I will chant under their shield so they journey inviolate. Safety to battle, safety from battle, safety everywhere they go. I know a twelfth. If I see a corpse hanging high in a tree, I can chant in such a way that he will walk with me once more. I can carve the runes in such a way that he will talk with me once more. I know a thirteen. If I speak the sacred words over a simple bucket of water and then anoint a young warrior, no sword will bite his flesh, no arrow pierce his skin. For I have that gift. I know a fourteen, which not many know. And that is when stood before an assembly of Azir and Elms, I know the difference between the two, and none that are not wise know that. I know a fifteenth which the dwarf Theodora chanted before Delling's door, before the council of Aesir and Elves, he chanted for the wisdom to sage. I know a sixteenth, which most men would like, 
and that's the affections and love play of the clever white armed woman, and to have her entirely. I know a seventeenth, which all young lovers desire, is that no potential lover would shun them. But I advise you, love, Vathnir, to take this advice. It will be wise for you to have it, good for you to know it, useful for you to use it. I know an eighteenth, and those that will bind the spell at the end of its making. And I will never tell that to any young girl or any man's wife, except maybe the woman I embrace and perhaps my sister. And now the song of the high one is sung in the high one's horn. Very useful to the sons of men, quite useless to the sons of giants. Luck to he who listens, luck to he who knows. May it benefit he who learns, and luck to he who recites. O oh, father, Odin of the Aesir, one-eyed wise one, come forward, come memory, come Odin.